Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a coronavirus update. Uh, I talked about talking about treatments tonight, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover some of the treatments that have been shown to work and some of the treatments that are in development and some of the treatments that have pretty much shown not to work. But before we get to that, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are going to do a, a physician Q&A this week, probably towards the end of the week, Thursday or Friday. Dr. Bream, who's in emergency medicine, who works with me here in North Carolina, and Dr. Peter Hogenkamp, who's family medicine up in Vermont, is going are going to be on uh, board. I think we're going to film it as a Zoom and then post it as a straight video. So to that effect, post your questions below. Um, if you guys will post questions, we'll pass them out to the physicians and we will go through those questions um, when we do the Q&A and hopefully that will give um, some people some other perspective. For those of you just joining, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician. I also uh, run a functional medicine clinic here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, or just outside. As usual, we're going to start with the numbers and worldwide 14.5 million cases of COVID uh, worldwide, over 600 and uh, over 606,000 deaths. Uh, 8. million people, 8.1 million people have recovered here in the U.S. 3.8 million cases, up 52,000 since yesterday. 142,000 deaths here in North Carolina. We're just about to cross 100,000 diagnosed cases. Um, that's up 1,820 in the last 24 hours. We've had 1,634 deaths. Now, some interesting information. North Carolina does have a pretty good state database site that you can look at case positivity rates, testing information, and things like that. And one of the things I've talked about for a while now is to look at those hospitalization numbers. They're very high for North Carolina, 11, over, I think we're at uh, uh, 1,086 hospitalized. That's a little bit lower than it was earlier in the weekend. Um, the good news is that that really doesn't put our, our system at capacity or uh, under significant strain. Now, we should be seeing pretty low hospital admissions in the summertime. It's the lowest part of the year, but it's certainly not in an area where it's going to, to threaten to overwhelm the system locally here in North Carolina. Now, that's not the case in Arizona and Florida and Texas and some other places. But luckily, we're here in North Carolina. Um, we seem to be doing better. The other interesting statistic that I noticed is that our case positivity rate is dropping. So that case positivity rate is like when we do a, a test for somebody in COVID, what percentage come back positive? And for the last month or so, that number has run between about 9 to 10%. Uh, we really want to see that number below 5%. And I was hoping that we'd start seeing some movement because we instituted a mask mandate here locally um, several weeks ago. And you know what? Over the last couple days, that case positivity rate has dropped down to 7%. And so, it, you know, it, those are sort of preliminary numbers that's been going on for a couple days now that those numbers have been dropping. Um, but I think that's a hopeful sign. And hopefully, you know, at least locally, maybe we're getting a little bit better of a handle on the virus. And hopefully, as these things are implemented in other areas of the country, we'll, we'll be able to, to replicate those results and hopefully get some answers. Uh, I think that what we're going to talk about today is treatments. Like, what treatments are there available? As we know, there aren't really any uh, very good antiviral treatments. But what do we, what do we have available? What can we do for COVID? And um, I think that these things can be can be broken up in a, in a couple ways. One of them are are studies that are ones that have have study proven benefit, meaning that there have been good randomly controlled trials that show that these things either reduce uh, death or improve outcomes somehow or prophylax. The next level is sort of things that have mixed evidence, either in vitro studies, meaning laboratory studies that show promise, or maybe preliminary human studies that show promise, but things that may be potentially useful that we just don't have enough data yet to really make a determination. And then we're gonna talk about some that are really not promising. Those are things that have had multiple randomly controlled trials that have not shown benefit um, and then we'll even talk about some things that are like just basically snake oil and hoaxes. So in terms of treatment that actually has got good data behind it that shows either improvement of, of outcomes or mortality, um, the list unfortunately is pretty small, but the, the first one is dexamethasone, which is a very inexpensive uh, intravenous steroid that we use in the hospital for lots of inflammatory things. We know that when people die of COVID, one of the problems is this cytokine storm, this pretty severe, um, you know, overblown immune response that people develop when they, 
when they have very severe forms of the disease. And dexamethasone has been shown to blunt that. And they, there's been a couple trials now. And in one trial in particular that involves 6,000 people, so a good study, good size population, um, it reduced mortality in the folks that were intubated in the unit. I want to make sure I have this right. Um, by uh, a third and reduce the mortality in those who are just getting oxygen therapy by a fifth. So very significant improvements in survival in people that receive IV dexamethasone, which is important. Um, the other one that's been shown uh, to have some benefit is remdesivir, an airplane flying over. Uh, remdesivir, which is an antiviral agent, and that has shown, uh, in a couple of trials that show some benefit, in one, case, in one trial, it showed it reduced hospitalization stays from 15 days to 11 days. Um, and there's a, a preliminary study that showed that it may actually reduce mortality in hospitalized patients. But that's an IV drug, um, more being done. It's being used though uh, for emergency use now in the US pretty broadly. The following things are things that have shown mixed evidence, meaning that either early small studies that show potential but nothing really definitive yet. One of those is a, a thing called favipramir, uh, or sorry, favipramir, um, which is uh, an anti-influenza drug that in a small study, study showed decreased viral load in the nasal passages and um, a bigger study is pending, so that's a possibility. Another one, uh, antiviral is one called EIDD2801, which has shown some antiviral effects against the virus in vitro, meaning in the test tube. But, you know, now no human studies yet, but those are possibilities. Um, there's also uh, a, a medicine, it's a recombinant ACE2 um, uh, drug. So we know that the virus binds to this thing called an ACE2 receptor on the cells. And so they've made up this, you know, basically just the receptor that they can apparently flood the, vi the body with. And because the virus sticks to that, if, if it sticks to that receptor that's just floating around free form, the thought is that there's not enough virus to infect a lot of cells. And so that's been um, uh, shown to work promisingly in, in vitro, meaning in the test tube. Um, and I believe that um, it's being looked at to do a human trial as well. Um, convalescent plasma is one that we've talked about. That's an old school thing where you basically take the plasma of somebody who's had the virus and recovered, and presumably there are antibodies in the plasma that may be protective, and you, you infuse those into someone who is either sick or who may be exposed and either prevents them from getting um, sick or will, will help treat. And there's some promising um, early results that it does indeed improve survivability. And I believe it's got an FDA emergency use, author, use authorization now with more studies pending. Um, another really promising, you know, potential is these are what are called monoclonal antibodies. So, you know, we have B cells that are immune cells that produce antibodies. So when I have this foreign virus, the B cell recognizes it and makes this antibody. And antibody is this little protein. And when it finds a virus, it sticks to it. And it's almost like tag, you're it. And then these other cells called T cells come and kill anything that that antibody is stuck to. And so... There's a thought if we can just develop antibodies that stick to the virus, it'll trigger our own immune system to go and destroy those cells. And monoclonal antibodies are, are basically antibodies that are very particular. So if you make a monoclonal antibody, it's only going to stick to one thing. And you, if you develop one that just sticks to the virus, then that may be a potential treatment. Um, and there are some safety trials that are starting, and that might be a very potentially very good treatment um, and could also absolutely potentially be curative. So that's one I'm, I'm in particularly excited about to see the results. Um, mono, uh, interferons are another um, substance that kind of enhances um, our response uh, to uh, infection. And in this case, it actually blunts that overwhelming immune response. It causes severe problems in some people. And they're being studied. Um, there's some small studies pending, um, you know, but again, potentially promising. Other ones are, are things like cytokine inhibitors, and they have some fancy names, cezixomab uh, and um, which you know, so far we've had mixed results with these things that sort of reverse cytokine storm. There's some studies that show potential benefits, some other ones that show that maybe it's not working, so more studies are coming. Stem cells um, have been looked at uh, using, uh, those are, are mesenchymal cells that can basically turn into many different things, and they have a role in immune response as well, and potentially 
those are, are being looked at. There's a thing called Cytosorb, which is actually a cytokine filter. It actually filters out some of those inflammatory chemicals. Um, and uh, that may help as well. There's some preliminary data that show that might be uh, helpful. Um, the other treatment modality that we're using are anticoagulants, heparin and, and, and aspirin and other things like that, because we know that there are people that have these vascular problems related to COVID because that, that ACE2 um, receptor that we find in lung cells is also in the endothelial cells of, um, of your, our blood vessels. And that's why we're sometimes seeing these large vessel strokes in young people attributed to COVID, COVID toes and clotting disorders and things like that. So anticoagulants are, are, are being used and are shown to be promising for those complications, not directly against the virus, but against some of the sequelae of the infection. Now we've got some things that have really been shown and studied to be not helpful at all. Um, one of those is lopinavir and ritinavir, which are two anti-HIV uh, drugs that were studied. And uh, the clinical trials were very disappointing and they did not show any benefit at all. Um, so bad that the World Health Organization actually stopped a couple studies that were looking at them because it just wasn't promising. Now, it may be that those drugs may be useful in conjunction with something else, so they're, they're not completely off the table, but the studies have all shown that they're not promising. And the other one is hydroxychloroquine, which we keep talking about. It keeps coming up. There, right now, I think there have been nine randomly controlled trials, all of which have shown the same thing. It doesn't do anything to pr prevent people from getting it. It doesn't prevent people from advancing um, from mild to severe symptoms, and it doesn't do anything with severe for folks that have severe symptoms. That being said, there's still 180 trials ongoing, but there have been about nine randomly controlled good trials that have shown no benefit and zero randomly controlled trials that have shown any benefit. So, you know, if Uncle John got hydroxychloroquine and got better, that does not mean that hydroxychloroquine made it better. Um, we need to do these, these studies. The one from Henry Ford Medical Center that we talked about was uh, not randomly controlled, was observational. So you cannot, remember, attribute causation to observation. Um, you've got to do these these classic sort of randomly controlled trials. Um, some things that are flat out fraud, you know, pseudoscience, um, using bleach, using UV light, uh, using silver, those things have all been pretty disproven and, and there's companies out there that are trying to sell this stuff um, to unsuspecting people. and. You know, besides being some of those being potentially dangerous, they don't work. So that's a brief rundown of the um, potential treatments, what's going on, what works, what may work, and what probably doesn't work. Um, I am working in the emergency department tonight. I haven't done a post-ER shift update in a while, so I'll probably do one of those in the morning. Um, I think on Wednesday, uh, for Wellness Wednesday, we're going to do a video about uh, osteoporosis and how to fight osteoporosis and the protocol that we use in our clinic that involves hormone replacement, strength training, some nutritional things, vitamin D, um, and we'll also talk about some other treatments for osteoporosis that'll be on Wednesday. And then Thursday, um, I think we're going to record the um, interview with the other docs answering the questions that you're going to put right below here. Um, and we'll probably post that on Friday. Um, we're still waiting. We're still trying to all work our schedules out. So it's potential we're going to either film it on Thursday or Friday. So please put questions below, and I'll pass it out to all the docs who are going to be on. I think there will be three of us. There might be a fourth. I've got another invitation pending um, to somebody. Um, and then we'll try to answer those, those uh, questions, and we'll post that video on Friday. Uh, as usual, if you find this valuable, please subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel, Vitality Medical Wellness Institute. Uh, follow us on Facebook, same name. Uh, leave your comments, like the, the uh, videos, um, and we will see you tomorrow. As usual, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of those around you, take care of your families, stay safe. We'll get through this, and I will talk to you soon. Good night.